think he's just initiating now. Yeah, it's on. Okay, we could get going now. So I just wanted to first welcome everybody who's online for this uh, particular event. Today we'll go through the education and life in Canada. So we have a full agenda today. We have 75 minutes. We plan to stop at the right dot after 75 minutes. Uh, we have speakers online as well, and I'll introduce them as we go forward. Before we get into anything, I just wanted to do a couple of disclaimers here. So whatever we are saying today, these are based on our experiences. We are not consultants, not official visa officials or anything like that. This is our experience here. This is how we experienced it. And this is based on what we learned after coming here for after years and years of it. Second, I just wanted to make sure that everybody else, please mute yourself. If you have a question, just put it into the chat button or raise the hand and our moderators will allow you to ask the question. And you could feel free to ask questions anytime in between. You don't have to wait till the end to ask questions. We're perfectly fine if you just have, just raise the hand and we'll ask you to ask the question, okay? With that, let's just jump into this. So let's get into Rahul a little bit before we get into our Canada uh, session today. So from overseas, so our overseas community in, in Ra, we basically focus on overseas studies. We also focus on academics where we want to help RIT to improve their academics, improve how they are getting our students ready for coming out for the further, further education overseas. We have done a few technology sessions where we have rather gone through leading technologies, Industry 4.0 and Essential Aids going through it and rather enlightening some of our uh, students and teachers uh, with with uh, the new technology coming into the market. We have also done a lot of networking. There is a ton of business opportunities. We have brought in guest lectures such as today. And also we run some mentoring sessions when, where we have a fixed number of groups assigned to a certain mentor and we are trying to mentor them on one on one basis. Okay, uh, with that, let's just jump into the session. So we have, this is the agenda today. So we'll go through the introduction. Then I will do a little bit of typical general information about Canada. Just show the typical geography where we are at. After that, we will be starting on extreme east. In Canada, we call them maritime provinces. So those are essentially all the way east. So we have Ajinkya Patil, alumni from Dalhousie University, walking us through those provinces, universities, their life in those provinces. Then we'll move to Kishore, who would walk us through Eastern Canada, that is essentially Quebec and Ontario. So there is a ton of universities there. We actually have taken a few key names there, but there is a lot more that we haven't written there. But if you have a question, we will either answer it now or we'll take it away and answer it if you need to. On From Western Canada side after that, we have Akshay Patil, who is alumni of University of Calgary, and he will walk us through the Western Canada. We are really happy that we have a couple of industry expertise today. We have Venkata Dev is online. He works in supply chain area. We have a ton of interest in supply chain management and that area. So we actually have him. We have Gruvinder Singh, who is in mechanical engineer. And he, he, work, he is 20 plus years in mechanical engineering in Canada and has a ton of experience on mechanical engineering. He will walk us through. We have Kishore uh, again here, who actually works in computer science. So we have really good mix today on number of attendees. We have about 28, 29% 20, 20, of people somewhere between IT computer science area there. And we have about 47 odd percent people in mechanical. So if, if anybody else is there, we're, we will be able to take your questions. We'll try to answer it now. If not, we'll take it away and answer you individually later on. Okay, uh, we will keep some time at the end as well for questions and answers. So with that, let's get into some general information. So first, I'll just go back to the first slide here. So just so you know, where is Canada? So if you look Canada here, so this is Canada right here. And south of Canada, we have only really one neighbor. That's United States on, on our south and on our west. So this is Alaska. And south, we have the 50 southern states. So... That's our neighbor there. So looking at Canada, so we have key provinces that essentially are right here. They're all 
close to the border to United States. So all the red dots here that are shown big cities, large cities under those particular provinces. So starting on this, as I said, maritime provinces, and Ajinkya will walk you through more into this. We start here. Uh, the famous city here, we have Montreal here, we have Toronto right here. Uh, we have Winnipeg, that's in Manitoba. Uh, we have Rajana here in Saskatchewan, Calgary and Edmonton in Alberta, and Vancouver, Victoria, and Kelowna in British Columbia. So these are the key uh, large cities. We also have Northern Territories. So we have Yukon, that's up north, really, really up north here. Uh, the large city there is Whitehorse. And when we say large city, it's really uh, 30 or 1,000 people there. So not a ton of people up north here. We have Northwest Territories and Ninavata Nikaliyat on the north here. It's really important to know this because there is a lot of mining, gold mining and diamond mining that happens up north here. So this is a typical geography. Before we get into now the education and so on. So just to introduce myself first uh, on the introduction panel today. I'm Amit Patil. I'm a 2001 pass out from RIT. Uh, I'm here in Canada from 2003. Uh, did my master's here in mechanical and industrial engineering uh, along with all my friends here, Venkata Devu and Gurvinder Singh. Uh, we all did it together there. So ever since I've been living here, uh, as far as number of years are concerned, I'm pretty much equally divided amount of time that I've spent in Canada and the amount of time that I've spent in India. So with that, now I wanted to just jump into the subject and I want to hand over to Ajinkya to walk us through the maritime universities and the life in maritime provinces. Ajinkya, over to you. You could start your camera. I'll shut my camera off to make sure it doesn't slow down for anybody. And then let us know when you're done. I'll start over. Yeah, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Ajinkya Patil. Uh, and be, uh, before starting my presentation, uh, today I'm going to talk about the far eastern side of Canada, which is maritime provinces. Uh, it is made up of four provinces, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Newfoundland and Labrador province. So a little bit about me. Uh, I have completed my uh, schooling in Sangli, actually, in Marathi medium. And after that, uh, I completed my engineering from Pune. And after that, I pursued my master's from Dalhousie University, Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, I'm telling this because uh, many people many students from our community have a, 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 a barrier, barrier of the language and they are afraid and they use sometimes excuse that oh because i'm studied in marathi language it's very difficult for us to pursue higher education in other country but that's not the case as you walk through the process you automatically adapt to the new culture and you get used to it so language is not a barrier and you can still uh, pursue your dream of higher studies so coming to our presentation, uh, so there are very uh, good universities in these provinces. For example, in Nova Scotia, we have Dalhousie University, which is my alma mater. Then there is another St. Mary Universities. In New Brunswick, we have New Br University of New Brunswick. In Newfoundland and Labrador, we have University of St. John's. Actually, when Canada formed 150 years back, these four provinces are the one where Canada actually uh, established. So these universities are more than 100 years old. They have very high uh, legacy and they have very high alumni network as well. Coming to our next slide. Uh, yeah, uh, so to get the admission in these universities, we have two intakes. Usually there is a fall intake, which is preferred by many students, whereas there is another winter intake. Winter intake is started in January and the fall intake typical period is August and September. To prepare to get admission into a university in one of these terms, you have to start planning one year before. So you need to give your exams which are required for this admission process. For example, you need to have English test exam like TOEFL, ILTS, and they have particular bands recommended for different courses. So on this university website, you should go and visit whatever program you are interested in and check the requirements for that course. And as per that, you need to plan uh, for the admission process. Uh, these pro maritime provinces being next to the ocean, a lot of research on ocean related technology is going on there. 
also there is a very big shipbuilding industry over there so mechanical shipbuilding and ocean related technologies these are very uh, powerful branches of these universities so if someone is interested uh, these courses are really uh, good for you also lot of ocean uh, renewable energy technology research is also going on there uh, that's also a really good scope over there uh, typical programs uh, of masters they are uh, in two categories one is research based and the other one is course based in course based programs they are typically called aminj uh, in these programs you have a courses you will have a small project and on that project uh you complete your masters whereas in research based uh you will be actually contributing in a research in your particular field so you will write research papers you will present them in different conferences all around the world universities will provide you opportunities for that as well and most of the research are funding based so the tuition fees for these research based programs are typically low uh about 20 to 25000 is the typical tuition fees for research based programs whereas for course based which is aminj program for that the tuition fee is around 40000 dollars this is a uh, tuition fees for 2 years uh one of the major concern for students is when you go for higher studies how much is the living expenses fortunately a uh, canadian government has allowed students to work 20 hours per week part time off campus and because of that you can earn some money and you can use that money to uh, you, you can be a self sufficient to cover your living expenses so you don't be putting too much burden on your family a typical living expense is 700 to 800 dollars per month and you can earn that actually from your part time job student work in super stores uh, they work at petrol pumps Uh, all kinds of job are equally respected here government has put a minimum wage on any kind of a job for example you uh, you work either at superstore you work at security job you will have a minimum wage of 13 dollars per hour and with that you can uh, live a decent life while studying after your masters you get a 3 years open work permit by go- canadian government and with that 3 years work permit you can live anywhere in canada you can work in any company you can gain experience and another catch is uh, after completing one years experience you can apply for canadian green card which is also called permanent residentship uh, many students go for that option and so they can uh, live in canada as long as they want and all, uh, so this is really good option and opportunity for everyone typically uh, in maritime provinces uh, climate is and uh, being next to the ocean it's cold climate however uh, our ocean is little bit warm that's why uh, temperature compared to rest of the canada the these province temperature never go below minus 15 uh, so these are this is actually warmer compared to other provinces so for living it's really good also uh, many canadians prefer uh, after retirement they come to these provinces to live so old people population is very high in these pro- uh, provinces and it's a pretty safe place for students to live yeah uh, this is the typical information of the maritime provinces if you have any questions i can answer that in the, our so, next question and answer section uh, thanks ajinkya so i just wanted to mention a couple of points here ajinkya so if you guys know titanic essentially if you know titanic you know halifax because titanic was heading to halifax before it got sunk yeah actually on next page there is a picture of oh, that there you go yeah uh, you see the lighthouse over there uh, that's the place where ta- titanic crashed and we have a cemetery over there those people who died in tra- titanic yeah so these are some of the pictures do you want to just walk us through ajinkya what those pictures are and just yeah, kind of uh, give a little bit of brief the left top picture is the university of uh, dalhousie university main building uh, it's more than 150 year old building next to the ocean the top right picture is the cape breton picture it's a fall color so in india we have coconut trees all over the our oceans uh, next to the seashores whereas in canada we have maple leaf here uh, maple trees 
and these trees change their color during fall it changed from orange red to pink color and this is very beautiful to watch during fall and this is one of the picture uh ajinkya do you want to just talk about that trail actually it's one of the most renowned trail right it's pretty long as well yes uh it's world famous cabo trail uh, it's about 900 km long it's all around the ocean it's actually a island which is part of mainland and okay. many people fly in for, uh, fall just to see that color and the beauty yeah and the left side uh, bottom picture is historical fort of nova scotia and halifax uh yeah it has a significant historical uh, significance yeah and you could see the halifax city just around that yes and there is a saying that nothing beats nova scotian uh, sky in color uh, because of its geological positioning uh, the sky is very beautiful you see all kind of a colors during the sunset sunset and sunrise Uh, thank you ajinkya so just to conclude here we have talked about a couple of big universities here we talked about dalhousie university we talked about st mary's there's a ship building as a big time uh, rather uh, business in that area obviously with, with ocean next to us and there is a lot of engineering courses available around that so if you are in the mechanical industry and want to get into more ship building type scenario there's a ton of education there's a lot of emphasis on renewable energies especially with the ocean technology and all other work as well so lots of research going on in that area as well so for people who are interested to study in future for in the renewable energy field as well okay so with that now let's move to kishore uh, kishore if you could start your camera and unmute yourself let's get to the eastern universities hello everyone Uh, my name is Kishor Tari, and I'll tell something uh, about myself. No. So I completed my graduation back in India, and then I pursued my masters in India as well. So I completed my MCA, and after MCA, I decided to move to Canada to pursue my masters in computer science. So I moved here in 2016, and I graduated from Concordia University, Montreal, back in 2018. and i will cover the eastern canada uh, and when i say eastern canada there are two main provinces one is quebec and other is ontario so there are two of the biggest cities in canada are in ontario and quebec the biggest city is toronto and the other city is montreal and canada's capital uh, that's ottawa that's in ontario as well there is a difference between rest of canada and quebec so quebec is mostly a uh, french speaking province so most of the people in quebec they speak french language as their first language it is a bilingual country of course because uh, most of the people in quebec they speak english as well but their first language is french and <laughs> and the other uh, province is ontario so ontario is one of the biggest province in canada as well and the biggest city in canada is toronto that is located in ontario and ottawa is uh, canada's capital so in eastern canada most of the universities they are in toronto city i would say uh, the biggest university in toronto is university of toronto there's one more university that's university of waterloo so university of waterloo is considered best for their computer science courses so that's ranked number 1 in canada for computer science department and in ottawa they have two other universities that's university of ottawa and carleton university that i haven't mentioned in here and there's one more university that's queens university that's in ontario as well and when we go to quebec uh, quebec there are two big universities there are different universities for but like university of montreal as well but for university of montreal you need french language that's why we haven't mentioned that in here so other two big universities are mcgill university and concordia university where i completed my masters in software engineering uh, i have listed uh, the different canadian universities and what are the application deadlines so there are two different links here so once we are done we can just go through the application deadline so you'll get an idea for fall term and winter term what are the 
typical application deadlines for different universities. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so I'll come to the admission timeline. So like Ajinke said, uh, you need to start preparing for your master's a year before. And program research is very important. You need to know what your interest points are. When I say that, it's a little bit different than India because when I say computer science, there's different streams of computer science here. There are three different, I would say, major computer science courses. One is software engineering. Uh, second is computer science itself. And third is data analytics and uh, AI. So that is very like getting most of attraction these days, data analytics and AI. But uh, like I said, when you choose your course, you need to research a little bit about your interest and what you want to pursue your career in. So for example, computer science is mostly focused on coding, I would say. So you can uh, algorithms and Java and most of the coding is done in computer science. And when I say software engineering, it's technical plus management. So you'll get to know about project lifecycle in IT and different per, uh, processes that we follow during a software development lifecycle. Those are covered in software, uh, computer, uh, software engineering. And in data science, there are different topics as well. Right now, they're more focused on AI that covers Python and R language. So those are the different courses that they have to offer. And when you say program research, you need to know about your interest and then you can choose a particular program. And next is deadlines. So for fall and winter deadlines, so fall term starts in September, uh, August or September, depends on different universities and winter term starts in January. There used to be a summer intake that normally May, but most of the universities have stopped the May intake. The summer intake has stopped it. So there are now only fall and winter intakes available on the universities. And typically when you have to apply for fall universities, like for fall admissions, you have to apply before month of February. So if, I, if you are applying for month of uh, September, August or September, you have to, apply before month of, I would say February. So you have six months in hand to prepare for all your applications. And to prepare for your applications, you need few very important documents from your universities or your colleges. Back in India, that's said like transcripts is one of them and ILTS exam. So ILTS or TOEFL, you have different options and you can choose one of those, like Ajinkya said, there are many different options and you can choose between those options. And uh, Ajinkya has already discussed about course-based and thesis-based. So most of these courses, two courses are of two years. The duration of those for those courses are two years. And there are 45 credits for course-based program. So one subject consists of four credits. So you have to complete 11 subjects and you can choose if you want to do that in one and a half year you, if you want you can finish your master's a little bit earlier like taking three courses but i won't uh, suggest that because there are some difficult courses and you need to prepare for that to do three courses at one semester and plus you will be doing part-time jobs like ajinka said there are so many different opportunities available for students to do part-time jobs so i'll move into that area because the typical tuition fee that universities have in Ontario and Quebec is between 32 to 40 K Canadian dollars and the living expenses. Uh, so the living expenses are a little bit different in Quebec and Ontario. Quebec, uh, it's normally same as I think I said in Halifax and other areas, it's 700 to 800 dollars per month. But in Ontario, if you think about Toronto, it's one of the biggest city, the metro city of Canada. It's a little bit expensive than the other cities. So your living expenses goes from 1100 to 1300. But uh, Canadian government has different rules for like of each states or each provinces. So minimum wage in Quebec is 
thirteen dollars, thirteen point five dollars to be on, uh, to be precise. But in Ontario, it's fifteen dollars. So you're spending a little bit more, but you're earning a little bit more than other provinces as well. And postgraduation work permit, it's similar in all the countries. Uh, sorry, all the states in here. Uh, once you're graduated, you'll get three years postgraduate work permit. Uh, only difference I would say is when you apply for visa, uh, for study permit visa in Quebec, you have to first apply for C CAQ. So that's, uh, you'll get CAQ from Quebec government, so Quebec province government, and then you can apply for federal work permit. So that's the only difference they have in Quebec and other provinces in Canada. Uh, Amit, you want to go on the next slide? Yeah, Kishor, can you just touch a base a little bit more on GIC requirements these days for universities so students yes. can think about the money part of it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so when we applied for our uh, admissions back in 2016, there was no rule for GIC. GIC stands for Guaranteed Investment Certificate. So it is a proof that you can uh, live on your own. So you have to submit or you have to open a bank account in one of the Canadian banks. I would say there's CIBC, there's Kosia Bank and ICICA. So ICICA is in India as well. So most people prefer Scotia Bank or ICICA. So you have to open a bank account in GIC, uh, one of those bank, GIC account. And you have to deposit 10,000 Canadian dollars. So that's your assurance money that you can live on your own for for a year that's a GIC and one more rule they have added is student needs to uh, pay their first year tuition fees so typically when I say 32,000 for Concordia University the tuition fee is 32,000 and first year's fee would be 20,000 so people uh, students needs to pay first year tuition fee plus GIC before they're applying for their work permit uh, sorry uh, study permit in Canada so those are the rules they have changed recently. I would say in within within last one year after pandemic started. Yeah. So Kishor, I just wanted to mention that that this is essentially Canadian government is guaranteeing that you have financial ability to support your decision to study in Canada. Yes. They want to make sure that you come here and you're not going to struggle, discontinue your study and go back. If you have ability to come here. You need to ensure you have ability to raise those funds and they don't need to be just your funds. You could raise those through banks or anything else. As long as you can show the ability that you have ability to pay it and rather pay the first year and show the GIC ability. That's what they're going after. Uh, one one more point I want to mention, Kishore, before jumping into the next one, is there are a couple of, I'm just going back to one slide back, Kishore, and mm -hmm. uh, going back to this is, we mentioned Queen's University here, and when we talked about your tuition fees here, right, so something like MBA from Queen's, Queen's University or University of Toronto or even McGill University does not fit into that bracket. So MBA at Queen's University could cost you as high as $85,000 per year as a tuition fees alone, uh, where Mag McGill will cost you around $65,000. Toronto is around the same range. There is another university called MacMaster is around sixty dollars to $65,000 range as well. Okay, So just be aware of your program. And obviously, you could find all the information on those key universities' sites. You could go and find out how much your program will cost you. And when we talked about GIC and raising funds, you have to raise funds according to your program. Yeah. So what? I need to add, I'd like to add one more point about GIC. So yeah. when you deposit uh, $10,000 in GIC, so how it works is the bank, uh, they will give you $2,000 in first month. And after that month, they will uh, deposit $7,000 in your account. So you can take out $7,000, uh, sorry, $700 each month from your account. So when you first pay 10,000 in first month, you, have, you can take out $2,000. And after that, each month you can take out seven hundred dollars for your expenses. So they're essentially, uh, uh, Kishore, you're saying they're just ensuring that you have money to survive for the entire year through GIC. Yes. yes. Hey, uh, Amit uh, and uh, Kishore Ajinkya. So there are a few questions related to topic we covered so far. So maybe I'll ask them now. There are some generic questions. Maybe uh, I can keep to us end. Sure. Uh, Go for sure. it. So uh, I think this one is for uh, Ajinkya. 
specifically i think you answered that on the chat but just if somebody else has that question too so this question comes from iqbal pathan uh, what is the scope of getting part time job in nova scotia yeah uh, as i said earlier like uh, many of the majority of the population in nova scotia and these maritime provinces is like uh, old age people so there is always a, a need for a young people to get a job and do some part time work so you will always find an opportunity no matter uh, what you choose yeah yeah that's yeah. typically not very difficult i mean as a part time job you're not really looking for any high class job you're looking for a security guard or cashier in the shop or that kind of, or cashier on the gas station right that type of jobs and they are available yeah and and one more thing i mean i wanted to add here right i think we covered this point in earlier overseas sessions too that typically uh, in india people don't like doing this job that these jobs are thought to be manual job but when you go outside uh, in say usa or canada or any outside country i think this job get the same respect as any other job so you know don't be ashamed of working like at places like a starbucks or working in a stores or something like that because if it is taking care of your monthly expenses there is nothing nothing wrong in doing those jobs so i think when you try, when you are coming out i think this is one kind of mental adjustment you have to do most of like people who are like especially nowadays they are single child or two two children so they are much pampered when they are studying in india by parents and everybody else they do not do even a small work at home but that's a mental adjustment you have to do when you come to study uh, outside so uh, other couple questions uh, kishore i think related to the uh, data science uh, area mm -hmm. so one question uh, is more like a comment i'm not sure what the question in there but uh, one question from omkar bankar is i have passed in 2009 from mechanical engineering and now i want to do master in data science uh, as i'm learning full stack data science and then there is a related question i will ask that too so answer of both could be you know together mm -hmm. uh, there is one more question from vikram korpale uh, he asked what's more preferable uh, to pursue data analytics course from an overseas university or university in india so uh, if you want to spend a minute or yep. so on that part so to answer the first question when you are changing your streams like he is uh, graduated from mechanical engineering right and he want to switch from mechanical engineering to data science so universities here they will ask you to do some prerequisite courses preferably two prerequisite courses so to finish your masters you basically need 11 courses to finish but since he is coming from different stream he needs to add two more courses so for him that will be 13 courses instead of 11 courses okay and another point i want to mention is you really need to make sure you write very strong sop and your application package if you are changing the stream you need to give a reason for universities why they should give you the admission right so you need to make sure you create your application package that supports why you want to do masters in a different field than your earlier studies right and uh, there are there are few questions uh, which are more generic so i'll keep that for the end sure uh, sounds good right yeah uh, i'll just cover the questions which are specific to the topics uh, covered okay. sounds good so okay. another question from girish uh, i think this already got answered that gic money has to be locked in or you can take out money i think you already answered that question yeah right uh, so is there uh, another question i think again related to the tuition and expenses from om kulkarni uh, is there any such teaching assistance opening in canada to waive tuition fees uh, other than thesis based course they don't waive it you will get paid for it as more or less an employee that look this this is the income for you from the tuitions and that's how it is they won't waive anything yes uh, universities each year actually before the start of the semester uh, they post opportunities and you apply for those opportunities uh, for example i was teaching assistant uh, for my entire course so i used to uh, check assignments and conduct labs for the undergraduate students in mechanical engineering yeah. So there are opportunities. Okay. But again, it's not waiving the fees, though. It's just it's yeah. just helping you to pay the fees. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. And and there are a few questions very specific to the branches. Uh, I mm -hmm. think we'll wait till the end. Yeah, we could uh, get to the end for those yeah. ones. And, and one, one request from my side, uh, uh, when you're talking like next speakers, right, uh, when you're talking about the areas, 
Uh, can you also bit talk a bit about weather? Uh, one thing because Canada, I know it's. Exactly I will. From I will cover that at the end. Actually, Yogesh, I do plan to go back to weather. I want to. Okay. We have, we have three things to go back to. We have industry sectors in each area, mm -hmm. uh, weather in each area, and opportunities in each area, and we also have two professionals who will talk around that one as well. Perfect. So I will. I will park those questions, and yeah. then uh, also you can briefly talk about Indian communities, uh, like yeah, we'll people. do that. Okay. Too. okay. Yeah. Uh, there is one question from a couple of people. Is there any age limit for higher studies? I can answer that as no. I know no. people who are going for master's at age of 55, 60 also. So. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, all right. Uh, go ahead, please. Okay, uh, over to you, Kishore, to walk through these beautiful pictures. Yeah, so uh, I'll start from top left. So top left is uh, McGill University. It's in Montreal downtown, city of Montreal, and it's one of the oldest universities in Canada. Uh, the second one is St. Joseph Oratory. That's in Montreal too. So that is the biggest church in Canada. It's one of the biggest in world as well. And third one is the beautiful city of Toronto. You'll see the beautiful skies and the big building that you see is that. That's a CN Tower. So yeah, it's beautiful. And the last one is it's again picture of Montreal in fall colors. Yeah, so they have really good fall colors in eastern side of Canada because they have different types of trees and they have maple leaves. Like Ajinki said, they change colors and that's beautiful, I'd say. Thanks, Kishore. I just want to add a fun fact about Montreal as well. So one of the things in Montreal, Montreal has the largest number of restaurants in the world. And after Paris, Montreal is known for its nightlife. In addition to obviously they host Formula One for the mechanical engineers would be really interested in it. And on a lighter note, it could be pro or con for students to go there depending Fair on if you're a student or a parent. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, with that, I think we could go to the next region first. And now we're into the Western region and that's where Currently, all of us are residing. So over to you, Akshay, to talk about Western universities. You could start your camera and unmute your mic. Uh, thank you, Amit. Hello, everyone. My name is Akshay Patel, and I'm currently working as a mechanical engineer in Carbon Corp organization, which is Calgary-based company. So I did my master's in mechanical and manufacturing engineering from University of Calgary. And I did my bachelor's in production engineering from University of Pune. So as we consider the Western side of the Canada, so Western side of the Canada mainly contains these three provinces that is British Columbia, Alberta, and the Saskatchewan. So these are some top universities, or I will say the most popular universities for the master's studies. In British Columbia, there is the University of uh, British Columbia, University of Victoria. In Alberta, it's UOPC, also known as University of Calgary and University of Alberta. In Saskatchewan, it's University of Saskatchewan and the Regina. So apart from these universities, there are some several universities like uh, it's not as popular as these universities, but they also provide the master's course or the postgraduate diploma course. Um, there is a link mentioned below. You can go through the uh, that link and you will get to know about the what are the other universities that provides the course regarding uh, the postgraduate diploma courses or the master's courses. I mean, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, go ahead. So. If you consider the admission timelines for the Western universities, it is very similar to uh, Eastern universities, what Ajink said and the Kishore said. So, uh, but the other thing is you have to do the program research like Alberta, Alberta, BC, and the Raja, uh, Saskatchewan. They are, uh, uh, their main industries are oil and gas industries. So they're uh, universities provide the courses regarding which supports their uh, main business or main industry. So like in University of Calgary, uh, they used to provide the specialization in pipeline engineering because of the oil industry to transfer the oil from the one place to other place. So, uh, so you have to do the research. Uh, you have to go through the universities, what kind of program they provide. And it's very important because that's uh, where you are directing your future. So it's a prog program research is uh, very important in the admission timelines. Also, we have to take care about the deadlines because it is, um, it's my recommendation 
to uh, apply the universities as early as possible uh, before their deadlines. Because when I applied for the University of Alberta, um, uh, before the deadline I was applying, but uh, they sent us email like, don't apply to our universities because we received lots of uh, admission, I mean, lots of applications and we don't have time to go through the, all the applications. So if you are applying to those universities, it will be the wastage of money because there is no way that you will get admission because uh, these are very popular universities. And especially after 2016, when um, uh, Trump came in power and he reduced the H-1B visa. So most of the crowd went to Canada. <laughs> so now, I, it, I, I, uh, in fact, I can see the difference. When I started studying in University of Calgary, there are very less people, like less international people from especially in South Asian countries. But now I can see that uh, in one student, we were total 20 people in all university, but now it's almost like 20 people in each branch. So more than 100 or 120 university, uh, 120 people each semester they are coming. So it's very important to apply as soon as possible. Uh, and of course, to do the course best or the thesis best, for the thesis best, you have to find the professor under which you want to do the research in that field. So it's very important to connect with the professor. You have to email them. You have to send them uh, your resume, SOP, so telling that you are interested in their research. So where in the course best, you can, uh, I will say course best is more flexible and the self-managed course where you can do the courses according to uh, uh, the field you want, like in the mechanical engineering, like which, which I did, I can do the 10 courses. That's the minimum requirement for the, my university. There are some universities, like Kishore said, the 12 courses is a requirement. So I will say the course best is more flexible and you can manage it according to you and you can direct it. It's self-direct course, actually. And same for the admission requirement. It is same, like you need TOEFL or the IELTS score. Uh, that's a primary requirement. Apart from that, you should make sure that you are getting the transcripts because when I was applying for the uh, universities, I have to wait for like one month just to get the transcripts from the bachelors from University of Pune. So you have to make sure before you apply, you have all these documents ready with you. And so typical fees for the Western universities as we compare to the Eastern universities and the Atlantic region, it's comparatively less. So I will say it's uh, $20,000 to $30,000 for a uh, master's course. Uh, if we compare in these three provinces like BC, Alberta, and the Saskatchewan, so BC is more expensive as compared to other two provinces because the BC has a high real estate market. So the rent uh, uh, is high and also the taxes are high. Where in Alberta, it's uh, less and even in Saskatchewan as well. So also, as Ajink said, like uh, Canadian government allows international students to work off campus for 20 hours. So you can work for uh, 20 hours per week. That is like around 80 hours per month. And with the minimum wage, it's more than sufficient to survive or for your monthly expenses. So it's not a big deal to uh, live without uh, with uh, a minimum wage and part time job. So safety, yes, Alberta and BC and Saskatchewan, they are all are uh, good uh, provinces. And for the climate wise, yes, of course, uh, winter is very, really harsh. But uh, if you get used to with it, it's okay because the temperature goes in the winter, it's around uh, minus 40 sometimes. So that's for like a uh, harsh winter, like in January and February, mostly those two months are the uh, harsh winter weather. And so I will recommend if you are planning to apply the universities, make sure that uh, it's just my recommendation you apply for the fall uh, uh, fall time, like fall intake, because it will get you time to adjust with the weather. So otherwise, if you, uh, uh, if you come in winter, it's already minus 40 degrees Celsius, minus 30 degrees Celsius outside. 
So if you came from the region like tropical area like India, where it's plus 20 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius, and you're landing in minus 20, minus 25 degrees Celsius. So sometimes it might affect on uh, like your health as well, right? So my recommendation will be you should plan for the fall. So at least you will get used to with the weather and with the proper jacket and the proper uh, uh, hand gloves and all, you will be okay. <laughs> so after you finish your graduation, as every other university, you will get uh, three years of work permit. So make sure that your graduation uh, period is minimum 16 months. So you should be minimum 16 months in the school to get three years of work permit. If you study less than 16 months, then you will get only one work, one year of work permit. So for uh, while in the program research, you also have to make sure that you are uh, the program which you are doing is minimum length of 16 months. And yeah, for the part time, you can get the job in off campus and on campus as well. Um, there are lots of uh, as university starts in the uh, in the universities, there are lots of openings for the food court and some also as graduate teaching assistant. So you, there are lots of opportunities for getting the job. Uh, and to talk about the, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, and to talk about the PR requirements. Yeah, so each province, uh, each province, uh, province has the different uh, provincial nominee program like Alberta provincial nominee program, BC program and the Saskatchewan program. So they have the different criteria. So you can find all this information on the site of IRCC. And there is express entry as well, which is common everywhere in Canada. Uh, okay, so in this uh, uh, slide, you can see on the topmost uh, a uh, picture is Lake Louis. So right now it's in the liquid state, but in the winter it it get freezes all, and you can literally walk on that to a lake. So that's the beauty of the uh, western side of the Canada. The western side of the Canada is surrounded by the Rocky Mountains. So you will find it's a good place to go for the hike, for the winter hike, for the uh, summer hike. It's a good adventurous place actually. <laughs> the um, on the second column, uh, uh, second row, second column picture is Lake Moran. This is also one of the beautiful lakes. There are lots of lakes in this area. On um, on the right uh, right col uh, right column and first row, you can see the University of Victoria, and the above uh, below the uh, University of Victoria, there is a Calgary city. So if you go and just Google it, like uh, most livable cities of 2020, you will find the Calgary is in top five uh, livable cities in the world. And Vancouver is in six, which is in British Columbia. So for that point of view, I will definitely recommend the Western universities are a good place to study and make your career. Excellent. Thank you, Akshay. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes to walk you guys through a little bit more Canada. And as, as Yogesh suggested, uh, before we jump to professionals to talk, so I'm going to take two minutes to walk you guys through and then professionals could jump in with their stories and life in Canada. So just to show uh, this is the region, basically regional differences in Canada. So on the right hand side, you have maritime provinces, as everybody said, it's slightly milder weather. It's not as cold as it gets. Uh, the industry wise, yes, we have shipbuilding industry and so on. Indian community, not a ton of Indian community, community in maritime provinces. They are there, but not to a level where everywhere else we have. Okay. Uh, what else? Okay. So on the Eastern now on Ontario and Quebec. So we have a ton of Indian community, lots of them. Uh, Toronto is full of Indian community. Uh, the industry in Ontario mainly it's manufacturing based. So that's automotive industry. If you are in the automotive sector manufacturing based, that's the place you want to be. In Quebec, it's all aeronautic based industry. Most of the aeronautics companies are in Quebec. Uh, weather wise, Quebec, Montreal is pretty, pretty cold. It could stay minus 40 for two, two and a half, three months. And it's extremely humid. And uh, that means that the cold at minus 40 actually goes to your bone. That's how cold it could get there. Uh, Manitoba right here after, on the west of Ontario here. So it's mainly the forestry there, not a ton of industry out in that area. 
Now coming to the east, further east on Saskatchewan, this is the province of Saskatchewan, where we have world's largest potash deposit. So if you have used fertilizer in your farms, there is over 60% chance that it came from this region and it provide, goes worldwide. So most of the potash gets mined right here in this province. It also has some rich oil resources as well. Next is Alberta, and that's an economic hub after rather Ontario here, because world's third largest oil and gas dep deposits are in Alberta. Uh, and that, when we compare to, say, Dubai, it's way higher than Dubai, if you look at it. Not as, like, it's comparable to Saudi rather. So this, this is the oil and gas province, mostly resource-based. Now it's moving towards the technology-based. And just between these two provinces, British Columbia and Alberta, the, uh, this is where the Rockies mountains are, like Akshay said, this is just beautiful area that you could see. Uh, the weather-wise, all these three provinces, all the way to part of BC rather, not all BC, could get to minus 40 mostly for like a month or a little bit, but it stays fairly decent in between. Saskatchewan is extremely cold. Alberta, we have hit and miss. Uh, we could get somewhere between zero degrees to minus 40 degree differential between one or two days. We get some warm uh, air that flows and that heats us up. On west side here in British Columbia, we have lots of tourism. We have lots of wood industry, lots of lumber industry there, and natural gas industry. That's essentially your British Columbia, with Vancouver and Victoria as the large cities around here. With that, I want to hand over to Venkata Dev. Uh, if you could start your camera and just walk us through a little bit on supply chain management, opportunity in supply chain. We have lots of interest that people have asked for during our forms in it. So yeah. over to you, Venkata. Uh, Amit, uh, before that, uh, uh, maybe, you know, I have a couple of questions related to that. So if I will club those questions together and maybe Venkat and next person, when they're talking, if they get covered, they will probably get covered during that. If not, we will keep it at the end. Yeah. Okay. So there are a few questions uh, related to specific branches. Uh, right. So Nikita, and they are, they are similar nature, right? Is there a scope for electrical engineering? Uh, is there a scope for mechanical engineering? Uh, what is the scope for cloud computing? Uh, then another question is uh, uh, from Gayatri, what is scope for the human resource management professional, uh, especially for the experienced candidate who have experience in Indian industry? Uh, is there any course for automobile engineering in Canada? And uh, another is from Amrik again. Uh, hospital hospitality professional. One question from Ashish about the civil engineering. So all these questions are related for different branches. Uh, what are the scope and then which universities are best for uh, those courses? So if they get answered, that's fine. Otherwise, we'll keep at the end. Yeah, that's a great question. And I will ask part of those would be definitely be covered with our yeah. uh, guests. So what do you think? Oh, yeah. Can you guys see me? Or... Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Venkata Debu, and uh, I've been in Canada since 2003. I uh, came along the same year, uh, along with Amit. I uh, uh, did my mechanical engineering uh, in India and uh, came to Montreal, actually, to do my master's in mechanical and industrial engineering. And in another two years, I think I'll spend more time in Canada than uh, in India. And the reason I'm saying that is... Uh, uh, life has been pretty stable uh, in Canada. So if you if you make a decision to move here, I think uh, it'll be a good decision where you would have good opportunities from a work, education, and life, and work and life. Uh, a lot of uh, information from an education perspective has been provided by Ajinkya, Kishore, and Akshay. Uh, and so, uh, if if you make a decision, there is uh, plenty uh, of opportunities here. Uh, if I if I speak about industries in general, like you have service industries, you have manufacturing industries here, you have uh, uh, natural resources like uh, energy sector uh, that Amit was alluding to. So, and every province has uh, a little bit of specialization in that space. So if I look at Eastern provinces like uh, Quebec and Ontario, uh, th the focus is more on uh, IT, information technology, uh, computer science, and uh, manufacturing, telecom, banking industries. And if I go into the central Canada, 
the focus is on the energy resources and agriculture industries. And if I move to Western Canada, the focus is more on the uh, natural resources like energy, uh, oil and gas exploration and all that. And so if I look at, across the broad spectrum of Canada, there is uh, plenty of work opportunities and, and diverse industry groups. And uh, wherever you choose, uh, if, as long as you are in the major cities, uh, work opportunities are there. Uh, as once you graduate from uh, your universities. One thing I would emphasize though is uh, uh, it makes a difference having education in Canada and looking for work opportunities versus uh, looking for work opportunities directly uh, in Canada. Uh, having that uh, uh, stamp of uh, uh, a university in North America uh, plays a big value, uh, even though uh, from a value perspective, uh, it could be different, but I think that having that uh, uh, stamp of uh, your North American university makes a difference. So something you should consider. Uh, and uh, kind of speaking into the industry, and I think Amit was mentioning about interest in supply chain. I've been in supply chain space for 15 years now, uh, worked in all the different areas in supply chain, be it uh, logistics, be it uh, procurement, or be it in planning of uh, uh, in the manufacturing space. Uh, there is a lot of uh, room in supply chain. And uh, I mentioned to you about different industries in Canada and supply chain has a place in every uh, uh, industry group there. And uh, right now I'm working in oil and gas, uh, have been in oil and gas for uh, close to 10 years now. And uh, uh, there is, uh, from a, a pay scale perspective, there is a lot of uh, high paying jobs uh, for professionals in supply chain industry. Uh, so someone who graduates from the university could look at uh, a salary range, depends on where you are in the country, uh, anywhere from 45,000 to 60 to 70,000. And as you progress uh, uh, in your career, you could make uh, higher salaries uh, depending on where you are uh, in the country. Uh, so. Uh, there is plenty of opportunities uh, the, the, from a job perspective and also uh, there is room to look at uh, uh, many aspects in, in the supply chain industry. So if, if there are more specific questions in, in that uh, area, I would be like open to take questions on that. Uh, and then uh, I also want to mention that uh, Right now, where we are uh, in 21st century, uh, uh, IT technology component is uh, a requirement in regardless of the job you're in. So whichever uh, uh, courses you will pick in the university, make sure you have some sort of uh, technology uh, uh, learning in that program. Uh, which would which would help you in whichever profession you take uh, in supply chain or you want to be in core engineering or uh, or a different field. Uh, there is uh, importance of having that uh, ITE component. Uh, so j keep that in perspective. Uh, Kishore alluded to about data analytics. That is a hot growing field here right now. Uh, so, and one thing I, I would say, or I truly believe, like all engineers have that natural analytical thinking and uh, aptitude skills, uh, which is which is primary regardless of whichever job uh, or work environment you pick. So make sure you are honing on that skills and have that uh, analytical and uh, technology uh, uh, component in uh, your learning uh, learning approaches. Uh, Kishore kind of mentioned about data analytics and artificial intelligence. That is a, a growing field here. So, and uh, Canada, uh, I think in Ontario area, there is a lot of uh, big IT companies that are out there. So someone who is looking to transition from uh, mechanical to other disciplines, uh, the, it's never too late. Uh, there is always opportunity to look in, in, look in that.
perspective uh and and if i just uh, talk about like uh, the jobs in general uh, there is a high demand for uh, it engineers and in engineers in general uh there is a, a big demand for uh, consulting uh, or work uh, work professionals in the consulting space uh so someone who is looking into uh get, uh or trying to get into a career in consulting like accenture or deloitte or uh, pwc uh so there is opportunity there uh, uh pro probably companies like those look for uh someone from a management uh, like an mba uh, designation regardless uh, right now a lot of these companies are looking for engineers as well so something to look into if you are interested in uh consulting workspace uh then uh, they, they there is demand for project engineers uh, and project managers regardless of the discipline and especially in it uh, there is demand for project managers and even in the engineering space and in construction industry there is a lot of uh, requirement or demand in that space and uh, and and one one good thing about canada uh, which which i i guess a lot of north american and western countries here is the preference they give on work life balance uh, uh so and and the companies here in canada they respect that uh, typically you have a 40 hour uh, work week uh, monday to friday 8 to 5 and so you have plenty of time for your personal life for your family uh, to explore the country it's a large country uh, uh we we do a lot a lot of outdoor uh, activities like going to mountains to uh, to hike and stuff so from uh, i think when you look at uh, 10 years uh, from now where what you want uh, i think that is something you need to look into but uh, canada as a country gives you opportunities to go beyond your uh, uh, just your work or other aspects okay and for someone who wants to uh, grow themselves in the country and have a family and kind of have that uh, uh, good environment. So there, this country is is being uh, really good. Like and and that's the reason. Like I mentioned, I've been here for 20 years. I never uh, had a thought of moving to US uh, just because uh, even though the weather is harsh, uh, yeah, you you get to see minus 30 degrees centigrade, which I don't like it either. Being 20 years in the country. But still, uh, there is plenty of uh, positives to look around from work opportunities, education, and having that work-life balance uh, in general. Yeah, so I, I think there were any questions that came through. But like, if you have any specific questions related to supply chain or industry in general, yeah, I'm more than happy to speak to. Yeah, th thank you about that. And we actually have a little bit of hiccup on the next guest. He had an emergency at his site right now going on. So we had to drop off. He was online and he just dropped off, called me to tell there's an emergency on site. So he left. Uh, being said that, uh, we're here open for questions now. Uh, I just want to take his words and just kind of put it on the mechanical industry side of it. So if you're a mechanical engineer and looking around mechanical engineering as industry on manufacturing side mostly the jobs are around the eastern side of the provinces in the ontarios of the world and on more talking about uh, oil and gas rather operation side maintenance side jobs if you are uh, into those kind of jobs like Ramesh said on inspection or in mechanical maintenance type jobs those are in the mostly western canada where we have lots of mining that goes on and that's lots of oil and gas operations that happen in alberta and gas operations that happen in uh, british columbia as well hey uh, thanks amit and there were a couple of questions about the supply chain management uh, uh, any specific certification required for Canadian industries? I think you answered that question on the chat. Yeah, so a CMP sometimes is preferred in more buying type roles. Being said that if you are MS or MBA from local universities, that's preferred. I think somebody also asked what about Indian MBAs? That totally depends on the brand. They don't care about some Indian MBA from a smaller university, some smaller college, right? If you are MBA from IIM, doesn't matter where you go in the world, you're going to get some traction for it. Yes. Uh, another question on supply chain, uh, uh, although you know it can be for other branches also, 
but Vivek is specifically asking, I'm a supply chain professional in India and looking for job opportunities. Is there any chance of direct jobs in Canada? And if, if you can answer not only for specific to supply chain, but I think this question is there from other branches also. Uh, so yeah, I think you know what? I will actually, Yogesh, take a snag at it throughout the branches. Okay, mm -hmm. so from supply chain, if, if you are trying to get direct, yes, it's possible. It's not impossible to get. Being said that, why would anybody give you a work permit to somebody uh, when the local resources are available? That's the true question there. So either you could come here as a permanent resident and look look for a job, but like Venkata said, you're going to come and struggle through finding a job here, considering you're going to be competing with the local resources. So the preferred way that we recommend is obviously do masters and commit. Being said that all our spouses have come from India and are working, doing jobs, fantastic, no issue. The one of the thing here is when you are here, if you're financially stable and you have ability to float around for a while, then yes, you could easily find a job and get into the workforce, but there is a waiting period for those people. Now going to some other branches, people are, lots of people are talking about masters in civil, okay? So there is a tremendous scope in civil. You could think about oil and gas operations and mining operations. Every one of those need a lot of civil people. In addition, we actually say in Canada that we have two seasons. There is a, there is a winter season and then there is construction season. So there's always construction going on and it's a busy area across so civil is really busy area across canada doesn't matter where you go especially in the western provinces where mining even oil and gas when we talk oil and gas we're not talking about just drilling operations we actually mine oil here we have oil sands that we put steam in and it melts down and they take the oil out of it that's a typical oil sands mining is what it's called. So there's a ton of civil requirements. Somebody asked about electrical. Electrical is one of those evergreen branches across Canada because of amount of utility requirements because of the weather that we have, right? We have very cold weather. There's always heat requirements. There's always electricity requirement. We can't afford not to have electricity or heat. Uh, that would be rather detrimental for anybody who lives here so that's really evergreen area across some people asked about cloud computing and universities i don't know kishore if you have any specific uh, advice on universities that rather have strong cloud type education yeah so for cloud computing they're not a particular course for cloud cloud computing but you can go to computer science and select your subjects like big data and cloud computing they have course or subjects focused on cloud area but they don't have separate course like they have for data analytics they don't have separate course yet for cloud computing but you can choose subjects related to your interest like cloud computing and they you'll get a better idea about cloud computing in those subjects Good, great. and for the universities i would say university of toronto and university of waterloo those are considered as best for computer science in Canada. Yeah, and Thanks. I can talk a bit about cloud computing as well, right? Yeah. So most of the time when you say cloud computing, you are actually doing Java full stack development, right? The only deployment parts yeah. come into cloud. And for those more than the university ex uh, education, uh, best option is go for the certification based on which cloud provider you love, right? Either Absolutely. AWS certification or Azure certification. GCP is now becoming big, right? So Development, like if you are working as a cloud computing engineer, you are doing development in essentially Java or .NET or something, Python or whatever language you love. So yeah, Yogesh, I just want to take a couple more questions on industrial engineering. There is a bunch of questions around that. Yes, so industrial engineering, mostly people end up going into either supply chain area or continuous improvement Six Sigma type area. Yes, there are lots of programs available and uh, opportunities are out there with both manufacturing and otherwise talking about a little bit people talked about i'm, I'm just trying to read should i choose canada or us that's personal uh, choice which way you want to go uh, if if you're really looking at not getting into the rat race that's essentially what your canada get, gets in the life is fairly laid back uh, it's not harsh running after something life we typically are known to be the most pleasant people, people to talk to. If you're talking with a Canadian, you'll probably hear sorry or please in every sentence that exists. <laughs> uh, that's just a way of life here is they're extremely respectable to everybody. Uh, 
they they don't discriminate much because there is not many local canadian per se everybody in canada is an immigrant at one point in their life if not they their 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 fathers or their grandfathers are one thing i would add to amit what amit said is like i think uh, when you look at canada personally i i think uh, more from a stability perspective uh, i know i still have a lot of friends uh, who graduated with me in india in indian in, uh, when i did my mechanical engineering they're still waiting for their uh, green card uh, if if you're looking at us right so uh, from that perspective like i don't think we had any issues uh, in canada and uh, you, once you have that stability that uh, okay you, you don't have to worry about visas and all that then uh, yeah canada is a place or an option for you to consider i, I just I, want to add medical side of it too just so yeah. everyone knows yeah. we have absolutely free medical no matter what happens to you healthcare yeah healthcare and education education like education and care. healthcare is free here there is no cost associated with it even international students gets the benefit as as soon as they uh, land here yeah if you are even, even if you are a student you are in the country you have been taken care of yeah yeah and especially uh, nowadays with the current situation visa situation in the us i think canada is become a very interesting option right but uh, uh, as, as most of you said i mean i'm in us for 16 years and i can talk a little bit from us perspective uh, yeah. one, one thing job is easier getting job visa is slightly more difficult in us nowadays yeah. And, That's right. Uh, I would like to add another point. Uh, compared to US, Canada, Canadian education fees is less. Uh, it's about sixty percent of US university fees. So that's another uh, point. Right. And plus, you can get uh, opportunity to work off campus while work while studying. Yeah, that's a, that's another big difference. US, there are certain restrictions at, on a student visa. What kind of jobs you can do? You are mainly restricted to doing doing campus jobs. So that's another um, another consideration. Okay. Hey, so just, I have one more question that I want to really like to take. Actually, somebody asked. I think it was Sakshi or somebody about masters for freshers. So masters in this uh, scenario, there are, I have seen lots of freshers doing masters. Not like they don't get jobs by any means. They do get jobs, but masters is typically designed for a little bit more experienced guys. It's not straight like India. Do your bachelor's, do your masters, and get to the job. Typically. Yes, there is a step where you go and do do a little bit of uh, take some experience before you do masters. Somebody asked about uh, scope, uh, scope in sports. Yes, cricket we play for two months in a year because all, every, everywhere else it's cold, and it's rainy or it's something else. Uh, we do play cricket, and it's not like two months. We've been playing cricket since what April till almost September, or May till September, if you ask me. Uh, just, yeah, go ahead, Abba. Sorry, I mean I just asked about social protocol. can you just throw some light on it yeah yeah so as we said earlier canadians are the most pleasant people you would work with or you would talk to they are never in a rush they will likely not talk rude to you and they are the most approachable people outside work and inside work uh say talking harsh is not a canadian style they are polite even if they have to tell you something for improvement they won't go telling you the instructions that's not their style they would typically just build the bagger around, around it to tell you not going after it on the social norms the discrimination is extremely low if at all i've been here for too long and i don't get discriminated for job by any means i have done the job that i wanted i have never been told why an indian got a job by any means never ever has that happened uh, could have happened to some people as an exception but it's not a typical rule in here another social norm on equality uh, gay lesbian gen gender equality this all very equal we don't care what your background looks like as long as you are capable you are worth it you would do it so i mean they expect all these things from you Intense. you should be ready to be part exactly. of it you can't be yeah. coming here with a bias in your mind and want to rather uh, grow here if you want to here if you want to be here you want to be as a part of a local society leaving your biases leaving your considerations leaving your all other aspects they will respect your gods nobody is going to say why you are going to the temple or mandir or yeah. gurudwara or wherever at the same time they expect you to do the same to respect theirs same thing so, with the food same thing with everything else and, and Abba, the, i i was okay uh, 
I just want to highlight right what I said during the U.S. Uh, similar session on U.S. too. When you are going outside, whether it is Canada, whether it is USA, whether it is Germany, UK, any place you go for overseas studies, don't just look at like just academics and study part, right? Just look at holistic experience because those experiences will enrich. I mean, academic wise, you might get the same courses in India or anywhere else, right? But the local experiences you get, you interact with the people from different countries, and that's the biggest learning you will get rather than outside the, I mean, what you'll get inside the class. So take it as a whole learning experience, not just the, your subjects, right? So that's that's most important part actually studying outside in my mind. Exactly. Yeah, no, education I mean, is not just ask, a degree. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, it's Amar. not just a degree. Yeah. Yeah. Why ask this question? Because uh, I mean, one should understand that uh, specific country and get mixed with that local life. And that's yeah. what uh, I would uh, suggest you if you can guide. I would, is there I would, ask, I would actually ask anything? Ajinkya to give yeah. example of he getting call for uh, Thanksgiving Day to some of the locals. Ajinkya, do you want to just give it a minute? Yes. Uh, actually, there are some uh, Canadian organizations where they uh, specially at, uh, arrange an event where they introduce international students to local people. You go on a Thanksgiving uh, festival at their home. They invite you. Then you build a relationship, yeah, bonding. Yeah. So, for example, uh, similarly, I went one of the families uh, during their festival. After that, I built a relationship with them. Then we used to go for hiking, even for some other things. They used to call me, so it, it become like a family, a home away from home. You can say. Yeah. Hey, one quick one question. Actually, I think you know a lot of students will have this question. Uh, it's asked by Manas. Uh, how do you keep motivated yourself regarding master course uh, along with different unfamiliar issues? So on a lighter note, I mean, if you are your dad is spending forty to sixty thousand dollars, that's motivation enough to continue your studies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think in general, I think the question is more from the perspective of right. You are going in an unfamiliar territory. You are, uh, you know. So how uh, there will be ups and downs not only with the studies the education system is different so how you keep yourself motivated uh, from that perspective if you can answer those questions so i think uh, you should consider this one as a journey not as a burden so yeah. if you go there to live their experience so it will definitely it will motivate yourself you don't need any other reason to keep you motivated so of course, when you work right when you work yeah. to pay your bill you get motivated and you know that, okay, I got to do all, everything that I need to, to survive here, to rather grow here and get back to the society, right? Okay. That's just the way that journey works. It's and it's like not only it's... international students, but uh, Canadian students also, they go uh, do part-time jobs with you. Uh, yeah. So you learn from them as well, how yeah. to live independently. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, one brings to, that brings a very important question. What is the return rate of students uh, just because of they're not able to gel uh, in that environment. Not many, man. I, won't, I have seen a few uh, that go back, but they go back mainly because that their dad or somebody in India has a big business that somebody has to take care of. Right. I am yeah. yet to come across anybody who goes back just because they don't want to be here anymore. Right. And yeah, I also have here. some yeah. friends, uh, like they are also from that big background and they they don't like to so work here as a part time because they don't need to. So, so if you are not enough motivated, as you, as I said, <laughs> so it is difficult to it's difficult for those kind of personalities. Yeah, and I would I mean, also recommend uh, that you know even if you financially don't have to worry, your dad is super rich. I would still recommend that you do those kind of jobs that will give you big experience how to work with people, how to work with different people. That's that's you know very important actually. Uh, one, one thing I'll add there is like uh, come with open mind. I think it's mentioned many times. So come with open mind. Have the aptitude and the attitude. Uh, attitude is really important. Like you uh, look at everybody equal and they look at you uh, in the same uh, proportion. So just come with open mind and don't be shy of anything. Uh, people don't make you feel embarrassed about what you're doing or why you're doing as long as you're not doing something illegal or wrong. Right. Hey, there is one more question. Again, it is a generic question asked by Om Shulkarni. Uh, what's prerequisite in mechanical engineering to strong SOP? So, but answer need not be specific to mechanical engineering. Again, and again, I will take 30 seconds. Uh, same for US, same for Canada, same for any other country. Uh, you kind of decide decided by that time what you want to do as a specialization. And 
you know you do something in, during your bachelor's in that regard so if you want to do something in cloud computing for example make sure you have taken certain courses so that you can put that in sop so you show them why you are number one is why you are interested in that subject but not only that what you already done to show that interest or increase that interest or you know to make your life self easy so that is my from my point but others if they want to add something about sops see the reality is i mean getting admission is one point the reality is if you have some experience then while you do masters you are not just learning the subject anymore you are learning how that subject would be used in your day to day life after your masters okay and that's the that's the important part of doing masters that's why i recommend for all the freshers that at least have a year or two under your belt so when you do masters you have perspective of what you want to do as a course so you're not doing course just to get the three credits or four credit that course gives you're doing a course because you know you could learn that and that you could use professionally once you go back to the industry Yeah. Okay. Amit, and putting that in SOP is really important. Why you are there, and what extra that you are doing for any other average student or average employee to be there yeah. and to get the job. SOP is the place where you get, you know, you can show what you have done different. Other thing I also suggest is, you know, especially when you are applying for a specific college, do some research on the college also. Put some relevant facts from the college, right? Suppose if you are doing. Uh, something on chemical engineering or mechanical engineering and specialization in certain areas try to figure out who are the uh, eminent professors from that college what research they are doing and put couple of lines in that okay i'm looking for this college so that i get to work with professor xyz because he is doing research in this field just put some butter on it which is perfectly fine and uh, that's how you are research yeah and that's very si simple as that right everything should be customized you can't just take a generic resume and send it to every job same thing with sop you yeah. can't just take a generic sop and throw it out right you have to know which university you are applying what's their strength is how you fit in there is what you need to write in there yeah and, and all the information uh, is available on that their colleges website so research for those professors in that department where you are interested in put few lines specific putting their names area and that that certainly help so we have a question here for ndt uh, akshay here has done uh, uh, actually certification in ndt i would ask akshay to kind of just take that if you could just give a little bit of light on oil and gas and how the ndt market and courses are here yeah so as i said like uh, western union is uh, western part of the canada is mainly based on the oil and gas industries where they need to uh, do the shutdown they call it here shutdown every it happens every 6 or 7 months so they need to do the maintenance of their pump and pipelines like uh, compression engines and everything so for that they also um, they need lots of inspection team for that thing so i did cwb they called it can canadian welding bureau level inspector number x inspector there are different level of inspectors as well inspector level 1 2 and 3 so according to that uh, so they need uh, every 7 months to do the uh, reinspection if there is any leak they have to change it and so ndt they have to do different kind of tests like uh, non destructive testing and uh, uh, r t radiographic testing and all so that is also a good option to uh, to get in the industry thanks akshay so the the question was mainly because ramesh is here and i really wanted to address his ndd <laughs> part earlier and he, here's what happens in ndd ramesh that's yeah. that's the reason to hey, uh, as a procurement guy like who looks after inspections uh, one thing i'll say it's considered a very specialized uh, skill uh like obviously you need to have those designations but uh, i see uh, inspectors who even work uh, individual contractors making around 60 to 70 dollars per hour which is which is a really good pay uh and it's really considered a big skill set if someone is interested yeah that's an area yes. to explore Yeah, I just wanted to be aware of the time, and I'll take last question about the weather. How much weather affects us? Okay, so think think about it more like this. If you live in Nagpur and the weather is forty forty five degrees for for six months of the year, how hot and how burning it gets? It's very similar when you live in minus twenty to minus forty environment for four to five months of the year. Okay, yeah. and the, the only good thing about it, the way Canadians live, is they learn to enjoy it. 
they, like even we being uh, born and brought up in India, we learn to enjoy it by we learn skiing. We actually all this party here, we have yearly ski trips that we go to. You guys have seen my pictures hiking throughout the winter. So all these activities we get involved in and we learn to live through this weather. And yeah, it's harsh weather when you go outside, walk outside. But other than these fun times that you have hiking or skiing outside, you basically go everywhere where there is a heater. There is a heater in the car, there is a heater in the house, there is a heater in the schools, offices, everywhere you go. The temperatures are maintained and snow on the, uh, on the roads are been typically cleared within 24, 48 hours. And yeah, even if there is snow, that's the way of life. I mean, and so that's what kept you, you, that's what kept you very happy even during last uh, power cut. Yeah, and after yeah, the first exactly. winter, you get used to it, essentially, right? The, the, just the first winter, first couple of yeah. months. Two you get are... surprisingly in winter, uh, even one degree will feel you like a summer. Oh, yeah. Your body adapts to that. Yes. It's hot when it's one degree, you'll sweat. That's yeah, how actually, our body reacts to it. You actually learn to appreciate those things more. Like if, if it goes yes. from zero degree to one degree, you feel like you can move on on shorts and t-shirts. Right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hey, I, I mean, I there is have... one question from... Uh, someone on how to build a profile for industrial engineering i think repeatedly been asked can yeah. you please show within a couple of minutes is 1058 yeah, so uh, we i think i replied that a few we'll chats okay, back great. actually but yeah. it's mainly mostly around your process improvement game on the continuous improvement side it's mostly about product life cycle development product life cycle management part of it so so i think product life cycle development from design perspective is slightly different but when it comes to industrial engineering focus here is on the process improvement continuous improvement part of the industrial engineering also jumps into supply chain area as well yeah. Hey, uh, and one more thing, right? Aba and everybody uh, on participants also. Uh, I think we have answered all the questions put in chat either through talking or through chat. However, if you have additional questions, uh, we have this event uh, posted on Facebook and LinkedIn page. So, in the comment section, if you want to add a few more, if you have some questions, uh, we will try to re reply to those. You know, in the coming days. Oh, Amit, 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 I have, I have, I have a small question. As you said, a minimum one or two years of the industrial experience will be very helpful for masters. Is yeah. there any mandatory uh, no. period requirement for masters? There is no mandatory yeah. requirement. There is no bachelor's requirement to do masters. If you could, you have ability to convince the university that you uh -huh. should be doing masters after twelfth grade. They would allow uh -huh. you. Yeah. And, and Ramesh, that point comes more from the perspective of uh, like, you know, if you have a couple of years of experience, you first of all get mature enough to understand what your specialization need to be, number one. And number two is after your graduation, either in US or Canada, what I've seen is if you have a couple of years experience before coming to master, that helps you against other candidates when you're looking for jobs also. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Okay. So Yogi, if before winding uh, the session, I just have one uh... A quick announcement. Um, Ra is celebrating its 50th weekly meeting on 12th June. So we are going to celebrate this through a knowledge conclave on 26th June, tentatively from 9.30 to 12.30 um, morning. And we have uh, very lucky to get uh, Mr. Satyajit Bhatkar, CEO of uh, Pani Foundation, as our uh, chief guest and main speaker. And there's a list of great speakers which we already posted. So I request all the attendees to please attend this particular uh, conclave and uh, help us to even spread this message to your friends and uh, interested uh, students. So what do you, uh, uh, Yogesh? Yeah, thanks. thanks. I think Abba. I want to give it to Manali actually yeah. to close this out, yeah. Manali. Yeah. Yeah. We have we are on time right now. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So first of all, I would like to thank you today's uh, panelists, uh, Amit sir, Ajinkya. <laughs> Akshay, Kishore, Venkata sir and Gurvandya sir. So that was really informative and it is going to help a lot of students and professionals. So uh, I would like also like to thank uh, all of the joiners here. Uh, today we have students and professionals from different parts of Maharashtra and also different states of India. So just for them, uh, RIT Alumni Advisory Hub uh, is an alumni group of Rajarambapu Institute of Technology resided in district of Sangli in Maharashtra. So today's session was presented by Raha Overseas Community. 
and we also have different communities for business network and business innovations forum and student community for rit students so we organize such a such sessions and also weekly meetings every saturday so as avasar said we are going to celebrate our 50th uh, weekly meeting celebration on 26 june so the details will be updated on our uh, facebook page as well as our linkedin group the link is already been shared in the chat also for the uh, more queries related to stud overseas studies and uh, related to raha uh, we have given one email id raha@rtindia.edu so please free to drop a email and we will be more than happier to answer your queries and on this note we are closing tonight have a good Marali, time uh, just one suggestion if anybody has any specific uh, suggestion for us for arranging session or any knowledge uh, requirement please do feel to write to us Uh, we will try to make it happen yeah and for those uh, who are asking uh, details of uh, presenters and their contact ids uh, please revert back to us at the same email id that raha@rtindia.edu and through that email only all the speakers will contact you so on this note we are closing tonight thank you very much for joining and have a good time ahead thank yeah, you yeah thank you all thanks to all, all. Done, guys. thanks to all thank panels you. very you. nice session. session yeah